Hey guys, it's Larissa. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and try to give you some thoughts. Don't take my word for anything I say. I'm not a teacher. Make sure you're reading the Bible yourself. Okay. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that, he, that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. So Paul, okay, the Corinthians, the Macedonians, they had a bit of a rivalry going on. And so Paul's using that to his advantage to encourage the Corinthians to give. And their, the giving is not so they can give it to the church, like an institution or a pastor or something like that. It's because there's a famine going on in Jerusalem and they are all needing to give to help their brothers in need because back then whenever there was famine, the Jews would all gather together and help each other, but they shunned the Christians because in their minds, those people left Judaism. So they didn't have anything to do with them. They didn't help them. It, like today, if there's a natural disaster, people try to rally around and help them. But back then, whenever something was going on, they stuck to their own because they felt like the Christians had left Judaism and they were leaving the law of Moses. So they weren't part of the family anymore kind of thing. They kind of shunned them. So the Christians that were in Jerusalem were in extreme poverty. They didn't have any food. They didn't have any supplies. So Paul and the other brothers in the church, not an institution, the body of Christ, were going around and making a collection to help the people that were in need. And he said in Macedonia, these people gave and First, they gave themselves to God so that, because anything that you're going to give, you need to bring it to God first. You need to take it to God and talk to him about what he thinks. And I know a lot of people think, well, if I'm going to give, I'm just going to see what I got in my bank account and give. But they went to God first, and then they gave out of their ability, and then they gave out of their inability. They were lacking some and they ended up giving out of what they didn't have and they urged Paul and them to take the money. They were like, take this, they need it. And they knew that it was God that was leading them to do it. It was the grace that God had put on their hearts to give like that. It was a sacrificial giving. Um, yes, we have grace that we get forgiven and we we don't deserve it, that kind of grace. But this grace he's talking about here is the grace to do things out of your own ability. Okay. So, that's what he's talking about right here. <laughs> he's just urging. He says, so we urge Titus as he had begun to complete this grace in you as well. So we sent Titus to you to help urge you in your giving. Because remember, they were going to give. But then Paul ended up having to send them a letter of correction. So it kind of hindered them and their giving because they had to be corrected. So now he's going back to encouraging them. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. So I'm not speaking by a commandment, but I'm speaking to you by voluntary, like volunteer to give. I'm not telling you you have to do it. It's 
voluntary. And he says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that he was rich and not in material wealth. He was rich. He was in heaven and he lowered himself and became poor as a human. In another scripture, it says he became nothing. <laughs> it says he was rich and he became poor for our sakes that through his poverty, we might become rich. Through his giving of himself, through his sacrifice, we may become rich and have an eternal, have eternity with him in glory. And in this, I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it that as was the readiness to desire to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have out of what you have. Sorry, I can't read. <laughs> For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. See, I already covered, I got ahead of myself. He says, you began to do this a year ago. I'm encouraging you now. You said you wanted to give. Now's the time to give. And not according to what you don't have, but according to what you have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but by equality, that now at this time, your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. And that's talking about in Exodus 16, whenever the manna fell in the wilderness, God gave each according to what they needed. Not there was whoever gathered had enough for their family. And it was all portioned out properly. And he's saying, I'm not telling you to get out of your, your lack, out of your need. I'm telling you to give out of what you have so this person that's lacking that needs can have what they need and whenever the time comes where you might need help they'll be able to help you guys it's like that way no one has any lack no one has any need that it's all equality but thanks be to god who puts the same earnest care for you into the heart of titus for he not only accepted the exhortation but being more diligent he went to you of his own accord on his own, out of his own desire for them. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And some people say that's Luke, but we don't know. It doesn't say who they are because it's going to talk about more people. And not only that, but who was also chosen by the churches to travel with us with this gift which is administered by us to the glory of the Lord himself and to show your ready mind. Because remember, he said, if there's someone you want to choose to send to come and get the collection, then you pick who you want. And they chose somebody. Doesn't say who it is, though. Okay. Avoiding this, that anyone should blame us in the lavish gift, which is administered by us, providing honor providing honorable things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men he's again going back to I know some people are saying that we're just doing this to get money from you but it's about honor and you chose who you wanted to come who you trusted to come so we're showing you that this is honorable and we have sent them our brother whom we have often proved diligent in many things but now much more diligent because of the great confidence which we have in you. And that's another person that doesn't say who it is. If anyone inquires about Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker concerning you. Or if our brethren, sorry, or our, if our brethren are inquired about, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. Therefore show to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Show them how much love you have and how much and show them that our boasting's not in vain that we've we've talked good about you and show them that it's true now that is a little bit about the giving and the collection for jerusalem for the christians that are in jerusalem um the next chapter is going to be about giving too so but it's all about the people that are in need in these areas 
So, anyway, I <laughs> hope you got something out of it. I'm going to get off here. I hope you have a good day. Thanks. Bye.